The holidays are back at Starbucks, and so is the peppermint mocha. Made with a dash of festive peppermint flavor, delightfully comforting mocha drizzle, and smooth, rich Starbucks espresso. Festive is a tap away. Order on our app today. Hi, I'm Bran. I love Hallmark summer movies. Hey, I'm Dan, and I like Hallmark summer movies. And I'm Dan, and I despise Hallmark summer movies, and this is the Deck the Hallmark podcast. It's summertime! Hey guys, welcome to the Deck the Hallmark podcast. We are so, uh, can I say, blessed to be back with you. Um, it feels like we just did one last week. Yes, and it does. because we did. We, we, we said, it's summertime, maybe we should slow down. No, opposite direction. I gotta be honest, Ramp when I up. signed up for this, and Dan, I know when you signed mm-hmm. up for this, we said, we'll do Christmas movies, yeah. but then somehow we're watching well, Pearl in Paradise. I gotta be honest, uh, it's interesting. I do think this is good practice for us. Good pra- practice because we're going to be doing four a week right. minimum yeah, uh, over the holidays. Having said that, it I do feel a bit deceived, and and for that I'm Guys, not very grateful. Don't even look for my sympathy. Mm, but our boy Chris Palaha is in the film yes. today, and so how could we not? How Chris, could we how, not? how goes it, buddy? God, <laughs> he's, not, <laughs> he's actually not he's with not us. Here. But you no, know. Um, Panda, you had a baby. We I talked did. about that in the Congrats. last podcast. You, you were out, Thanks. but you're back. Yep. Apparently, all it takes when you have a baby is just like a quick, Ten days. quick back in the saddle. Look, Ten guys, days, I watched this movie with my baby girl. Uh, she gave it a loud scream of a review. Okay. So there it was. Good. I'm mm. sure you have really great notes. <laughs> sure. Um, <laughs> Thompson? Yeah? Are you ready for this one? Uh, look, I couldn't be more ready. No. It's... Just a bonus summer film. Yeah, a bonus summer film. We I'm, not even, gonna, I'm not even going to do the whole rigmarole about liking us or uh, rating review, us on, pod, on Instagram, iTunes, Twitter, or following us on all the socials mm. at Hallmark Podcast. You say I'm social not. weird. Social. <laughs> so, so, social. 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 Yeah. Social. It's social a social media. Network. Um, I'm not going to do all of that, but you can do all of that. Mm. Um, listen to any of our other podcasts and you'll get the whole rigmarole. Um, I probably spent more time saying that I'm not going to do it. Are we ready to go, guys? Yes, I'm as ready this. as this ever. This is about Pearl and Paradise. Hit us up. Which aired on August 18th, 2018. And it went a little something like this. The movie kicked off with our leading gal, Alex, and her sister going on a scuba diving adventure so that Alex can take pictures of a really old ship. She's a photographer for a magazine. Um, She's really great at her job, aside from the fact that she never turns in her pictures on time. And so her boss is like, if you don't start getting your stuff in, I'm giving that promotion to Ben Watson, a rival photographer who we see once and never see again. (laughs) We then meet Colin, our leading man. He's an author who wrote a book about an adventure-seeking guy who finds a special pearl. That book is titled, you guessed it, Pearl in Paradise. So Alex finds uh, out about this pearl on some website and, uh, and she uh, tries to get Colin to go to Fiji with her to help her find the pearl so she can take pictures of it for the magazine's big 30th anniversary edition. And he's like, sure, except for the fact that he doesn't actually know where the pearl is. But Colin, Colin is kind of at this interesting uh, place in his life because he, he can't write another book that his publisher is okay with. And he's like, okay, I got to go do something to try to get some inspiration for uh, this next book. So they get to Fiji and and we find out that Colin's kind of a local celebrity there. Everyone thinks that Colin is uh, exactly like his book character. But in reality, Col- Colin's actually really quirky and he hates the outdoors. So he's not super pumped about going out to the jungle. So Colin and Alex find this man and his daughter to help them navigate the jungle. And uh, Colin and Alex quickly become a chummy with one another, if you will. Uh, Colin does the classic, so what's your boyfriend think about you mm, traveling so great much? Great scene. And she's like, I don't have one, so keep doing what you're doing, cute boy. Um, and so uh, all of this is happening, and they're, they're really getting to know each other and like each other. You can tell the sparks are flying uh, until Colin says, you know, I don't know where the pearl is. And she's like, what? <laughs> 
And uh, he says, oh, I'm sorry. I just, I just, I'm trying to be something that I'm not. And she's like, okay, I forgive you. Uh, keep doing what you're doing. And so they, uh, they have a general idea of what a pearl is. And they got to they gotta cross this river. And we find out that Chris Palaha is an Olympic swimmer. Just the <laughs> speed on that guy. Um, and they get to this waterfall and they find the pearl. Mm. But in finding the pearl, they decide we're not going to take pictures of it. We're not going to tell anyone we found it because if we did that, it would take the faith away of all that encompasses the pearl. So they put the pearl back and they agree we're not going to tell anybody that we found it. But there's a big misunderstanding. <laughs> Alex hears as there is. Alex hears from her uh, her boss that Colin's going to write a story about finding the pearl, and she's like, Mm-mm, "I'm leaving." So she goes back, but then she reads a story, and it's actually about how he loves Alex, and that Alex is the real pearl, mm, something like that. Yeah. Um, so he shows up at her work. They kiss. He writes a new book, and it's based off of her. And they run off into the sunset, and that, my friends. Pearl in Paradise. Boy, oh boy, oh Man, boy. I tell you what. Summertime. <laughs> uh, we always start off with our hot take. And Panda, since you weren't here in the last episode, I'd love to start with you. What did you think? I can't wait for this. Of this movie. So here's the deal. I think I realized watching Pearl in Paradise that I like Hallmark Christmas movies exponentially more than I okay. like Hallmark summer All right. movies. But that said... There were a couple things this movie did really well. First of all, I thought the two leads, Jill and Chris, were yeah. phenomenal. I mm. actually really liked them. I thought they had pretty good chemistry throughout the entire show. Jill Wagner. Jill Wagner Palaha. did a great job. Yep. Yeah. Oh, I really enjoyed her character. I thought it was really good. I thought it was great that they shot on location. It was really beautiful. In Fiji. In Fiji. They used uh, local, uh, local. local people. So some of the actors were actually from Fiji. They're Fijian. Really, they're Fijian. Fijian, yeah. yeah. Really cool. Uh, but the, for me, the plot was it was fine um it, it was okay i will say the one thing i really did like there was an actual pearl for them to find i thought it was going to be something where it was just purely like yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah it's, there's right. no pearl I expected but I, them to some get metaphorical find, yeah, pearl. metaphorical yeah. way it was but uh they they opened they they found the thing and I, they were about to open it. i was like it's not going to be there's yep, going to be stolen. Not, yeah, and then it and, was there yeah no i was happy with that yeah. and so overall i thought it was it was fine but i realized the reason i like hallmark movies is the christmas okay, element to it that's fair mm. uh thompson you know, uh, I, I will say the best thing about this movie is, is it made me look up more about Fiji. Okay. Fiji's pretty. I, I, it's gorgeous. And I found out some things. First of all, uh, Fiji is an Austronesian nation. That's why you have some people that spoke a little bit of Australian. That's fair. Huh. Um, there's, there's a lot of Hindi spoken there. English, Interesting. English is also a language of origin. So they actually did a good job of representing all of those people groups. Now, the one there. girl kind of had a British accent. It was a weird British, it, like a, a Br- no, no, there I'm was an sure Australian, if... New Zealand kind okay, of okay, thing okay, in there. Okay, that was her. Okay. The yeah. other thing interesting about Fiji is they also can make really terrible movies. Oh my gosh. <laughs> um, Get out of here. Look, uh, look, I, I will say this. I, Palaha is a champion of these movies because he's understated. Like he brings the smolder. Like yeah. he doesn't like go all crazy. And then Jill Wagner is perfectly fine. But this movie's just boring. Like that, at the end of the day, like the the scenery was so beautiful, and I was bored to tears. Like at least in a movie like. Switch for Christmas, like it is absurd, but I'm really wondering what's going to happen at these two Christmas parties. Whereas at Pearl in Paradise, it just for a movie that was supposed to be about adventure. Ew. So you're saying you didn't really care that much? I, I didn't care at all. You didn't care if they found the pearl. I didn't care if they found the pearl. You no, see, no, no. That to me was. I thought I liked that they included the element of mystery in that. I did think that that was okay. The, I, I thought that was better. This and made is a it movie more that could have been a half an hour long. <laughs> It could have easily been a half an hour. But sure. we would have missed out on all the smolder that the, Chris and there brings. Are, there is a lot of smolder. He, that man smolders. He, like, I feel like he's just like, he he understates what he says, and he says it almost in this like whisper, but yeah. like a manly whisper. Yeah. But still, he's a different character than he was in Rocky Mountain yes. Christmas somehow. I want to be Chris when I grow up. loves his tea, but can I yes. just say? I mean, loves his tea. Loves his and tea. And thankfully, his tea came in handy. You remember that? I do remember With that. The cleaning. I don't oh, know yeah. if that's true at all. If yeah. you can use tea to clean the lens of a camera if it gets muddy. Don't know. 
but I'm not going to try it out. <laughs> not worth the risk on my part. I will say um, I did have a problem with the, I thought Wagner was great, but I, I had a problem with the character who is somehow simultaneously a perfectionist, but also is like freewheeling, let live and let live, let go a little bit. Is, did that not seem like a contradictory well, I've got message? All, are we? Here's the other question: Are we really buying the idea that Chris is a recluse, kind of like author? Like with his looks, he's not just he's not just anybody's kind of cat. But he's run his course. I think in in, in one point in time, yes, Pearl in Paradise was just great. But then the the diamonds in Dallas and the rubies in Rhodesia and all the other ones he made, like those movies didn't really dog sized to death. Dog sized, <laughs> didn't do as well. And so he's yesterday's news. Yeah. And now, so that's why he's kind of closed. Exactly. In. Oh, I it's can like, buy that. Um, Kevin Costner. No, Kevin, that, that's Kevin that's Costner that's used to be the thing. Like yeah. the ladies used to love him. And now they're like, Kevin Costner, I don't need another water world. So I love this movie. I thought it was great, really fun. I thought the two leads uh, were great. Like, I thought Chris and Jill had really good chemistry together. Yeah, I really, and, and this is coming, I mean, I know that Rocky <coughs> Mountain is kind of fresh in our mind because we only did it like a month ago, a month and a mm. half ago. Wow, uh, feels I like it's years ago. But, so, but seeing like, like him and the lead from Rocky Mountain, I think we were all kind of like, eh, whatever. But like there was some, I feel like there was clear chemistry, which is a win. You don't always get that with you these movies. You don't. That's accurate. Um, the story, I agree. It was like it. It seemed almost a little bit half baked, if you can believe it. Uh, <laughs> like I do agree. It, it like it could have been shrunk down um, or just added some some. I don't know. Like anything bad happening, uh, I think would have been helpful. Doesn't it feel like they do a lot of walking? They do There's a, lot, a of walking, lot of walking, but also. They don't go far. There was and a day. I, I so also, they wake up, and then next thing you know, it's nighttime, and they're in this village. And it's like, well, I, guess. I also feel like for being in Fiji, if you just Google image search Fiji, like they didn't really take advantage of the scenery. Yeah. It's a beautiful movie, but I feel like with just a couple of crane shots, it could have been. Yeah, that's true. Even more beautiful. I agree. They spent a lot of time at the resort. Showing There's how a great that resort is. Resort. <laughs> yes. Yeah. All that you to know. say, I liked this movie. I thought it was really fun. Um, yeah, I don't have a, a lot of negative things to say about mm. it. I had a lot of fun. My I wife did you. not like it. So there you Does go. She, I, she sounds like she doesn't like many of these movies. <laughs> She's not a huge fan. No, yeah. You're right. My wife isn't either. Now, we have a couple of calls. Uh, for our hot takes, we got we're going two. Um, we two. had a bunch of calls. We had for a this bunch one. of calls. Um, we'll go to uh, yeah, we'll go to okay. Um, so uh, we'll hear what people are thinking about about this movie. Here comes the the very first one. Hi, this is Ruth from Yelm, Washington, and I had some thoughts about uh, Pearl in Paradise. I was absolutely blown away by how amazing this film was. It had a wonderful leading couple, mm-hmm. mm. Jill and Christopher. I don't even know where to start with them. Don't even know where to it start. It was already a hilarious film, very well written. But mm. what was even more important was when you got to the heart of the story. Yeah. And the whole thing about space, that meant so much to me. So this is easily now in my top ten Hallmark films. Wow. Thank you, guys. Bye-bye. Top 10 Hallmark films. Wow. That's big. That now, is huge. Now, where would you put this on your list of, like... Well, let's see here. So we've seen, what, six so far? And I, those are the only six that I've ever seen. Right. Um, You know, we... We're gonna our Christmas train podcast doesn't come out until Friday, but we've already recorded it. <gasps> what? And I know that that's, you know, we're not supposed to, you know, talk like that. Um... I would probably have this and Christmas Train overall as a film better than the other four. Okay. Yeah. Panda? Uh, I actually, now that we're comparing them, this is going to actually be surprising because I probably actually have it higher than I originally thought in my mind that I would have. So I, I actually would have this probably overall three or four overall. Well, I think It's better than nine lives. And you weren't here for the Love at Sea podcast. I know you listened, but we talked about how the summer movies tend to get a bigger budget. Like the Christmas movies, 
I think it's really about Christmas spirit because they don't put a lot of money into anything else. And right. so in these movies, you're in Fiji, you're on a cruise ship, you're on all these places. And so there's a natural inclination to go, all right, they spent some more money on this and I can tell the difference. And I will say this, what I'm learning about these movies and we got a bunch more to watch is that the two leads mean a lot. I did not like this movie. I was bored to tears, but it wasn't shoddy. Like right. some of the movies we watched have been just absolutely was this made in a day kind of Shot situation? Well, well, what was also <laughs> interesting to me is they carried, there was an internal logic to the film that carried throughout. And it was actually, if I can be honest, I thought overall it was a really good film. Yeah, I think what you're trying to say is, is in most of the Christmas movies we watch, there's just a lot of just sheer buffoonery that's not meant to be funny that we just find that are just inconsistencies throughout the whole movie. But Whereas you don't see it with this film. This you really film, don't. There's three or four big ones, I think, that are chuckle-worthy, but the rest of it holds up fairly well. Yeah, I thought overall yeah. it, was, it was solid. And I, and I like that. Do we have another call? I think we have one more call. Book it. All right. Here we go. Um, and I really loved the acting. I just thought the acting was kind of brilliant uh, in general, but especially that one guy, Chris, uh, uh, however you say his last name, I don't even know how you say it, but and what was cool about it was like, it was almost like being in Fiji, you know? Like the movie took me to Fiji. I mean, literally the movie took me to Fiji. I filmed it in Fiji. Anyway, Chris Pla. Calling you guys from Orlando. I just want to say, you know, hey, shout out. Peace. Thank you, Chris. Oh, of oh, course Chris. he called in. <laughs> he, I will say this. One of the nicest guys, if you ever get a chance to talk to him, one of the nicest guys in the world and was willing to come on our podcast after we did our first episode, and then he calls the old hot take line. Now, Chris, are you there? <laughs> is that Dan being nice? Oh, my oh, goodness. Right Time out. Chris is on the show Wait, right now. What? He didn't. He, it's because I've got nothing else to do, Dan. I mean, Brandon fooled us. It's okay. It's a brand trickery, dude. I did not know this was no, happening. I thought that was a recorded. Unbelievable, guys, guys. guys. <laughs> Unbelievable. Well done, Thank well you, done. Chris. Hey, you really, you really. Uh, I know I gave you those lines, uh, <laughs> and you really acted the crap out of them. Good, good on you. You Thank still you. got it. I, Thank uh, you. All right, brothers. Hey, uh, I love what you guys are doing, man. Proud of you, boys. Hey, Thanks, we're Chris. Of, we're proud of you for making such a great movie. Now, hey Dan, did you hate it? Did you, what did you think? I, I did say I did say that you brought plenty of smolder, Chris. I did say that, um, See, but I did also win. say that I was bored a little bit, and I'm sorry about that. But I was bored. <laughs> okay, all right. <laughs> but all right. The, the scenery's beautiful. You're a good guy. And we got to see you with your shirt off, so. <laughs> so Bonus. Win. Yeah, I like that part. <laughs> it's a big win for everybody. <laughs> Mm. All right, gentlemen, have fun. Thanks, Chris. Chris. Thanks for it. Bye bye now. What a boy. I mean, did you, I get you? You got me. It was a it was a get gut. Now, what in the world? Why didn't you just let us know he was calling? Because I thought it would be fun. <laughs> wow, like well, a, you sure like got a us. Little... He is a good guy, man. You can take out what I said about him being nice. I mean, because I'm going to say it again right now, and I don't want to look like I'm just a fanboy because yeah. I talk bad about both of his movies. <laughs> it's a really weird place to be. Yeah. What a guy. That he Chris is a good Bullock. guy. But I, can I say this? In all honesty, I did grow in my appreciation for him as an actor. Yeah. Overall, he is really, he, he's think, really solid. I think the key to what he does is he doesn't overstate or go mm-hmm. nuts in anything. Like, we watched Peña Vega last week, <laughs> and he is moving his head around like it's the last scene he'll ever act in. And it's just like, calm it down, buddy. But Paul always looks like he's in control out there. Love him. Mm. That's what I always say. Yep. Now, uh, <laughs> it's time for all the feels. Now, Panda... This is not Christmas feels. I want to make that clear. This is just general lovey-dovey feels. lovey dovey. It's tough. What do you got? So there are a couple <laughs> scenes that I really I really liked. And I think that the key moment is when he finds the pearl sure. and he looks at it and you he were says... so excited about this pearl. You really are. <laughs> no, it's a great scene. Did you guys okay. know they found the pearl? Guys, yeah. I love when it's he found the pearl. pearl. It's, it's a, a real pearl. pearl. It's not a metaphor. Because it's not a pearl. metaphor, and I appreciate that. Uh, I, I thought it was a really fun scene, and it brought a lot of emotion to it. And he, they both go on this journey, and it all culminates in this one scene Dear where they are... gosh. <laughs> Really finding their way. Hey, you know what? Let me have my moment. It gave me some feels. I I, I liked it. Now, I'll tell you what my feels were. Um, this is before the jungle. They're still on the... Okay. They're still at the resort. Right. Yeah. And he wanders up, and she's eating dinner, 
mm-hmm. and they have a little dance with one another. Yep. And you can tell there that there's something sparks. going on. That there are sparks there. And then and then he says, oh, I got to go. And she is clearly like, oh, I don't want you to go. Like, I, that scene gave me all the feels. Mm. All those feels. All I love the that feels. Scene. <laughs> uh, not a whole lot of feels in the movie for me. I will say that the scene where he comes up and starts talking bad about her at the bar and she's got a drink yeah, yeah, and yeah. she orders him a drink. That's a pretty cute <laughs> of scene. Of course, your feels are yeah. negative. Uh, well, what's weird is that, is that I she's... I love it when he's mean. She, no, no, no. She's so perfect in that scene because she just plays along with it, orders him a drink, and then lets him know that she's the girl he's talking bad about. And I will say, I do want to reiterate that this is counterintuitive to her personality as a perfectionist. Like, yes. All she, we hear from her boss is, you're a perfectionist. It takes you forever to get the pictures in. And then she gets to Fiji, and she's like shooting from the hip, cool breeze, order a drink girl. And it's, it is this weird, it doesn't make any sense to me. And there's, a, there's some hypocrisy in her character. But that scene at the bar is pretty cool. Good for you. Yeah, I did what I could. Yeah, 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 that's not bad. It's time for the wait what? Wait what? Sorry, I had a hiccup. It's time for the wait what? <laughs> <laughs> it's the time of the show where we, uh, we watch some things mm. in this movie go by and we wanted to pause and go what what wait what um i'm i'm gonna kick us off boys. do it i got the the rule is that we limited it to two okay um and i have four so i'm gonna limit it to two here's the first one so <laughs> she shows up there this kind of goes back to your scene right yeah. or, or at least it goes to the uh the airport so they they kind of bump into each other at the airport and he's like this is my bag and she's like no this is my bag i how did she not know what he looks like? Like in all of the research, on all that those she book did, jackets, and all the book jackets, <laughs> yeah. and everything, she didn't like. And she says, "I've been doing a lot of research on this." She never found out what the guy looks like. No, that's a that's a serious. That problem. whole thing was like, wait, what? We, it's 2018 for crying out loud. Yep. And then Chris says a line in this movie when they find the pearl. And they're deciding if they're going to oh, put it back. Oh, this line. And he says this line. Proof denies faith. No. Uh, <laughs> that's kind of a what the hallmark for me. But it really is a wait what. Because I think that he's talking more about a Kierkegaardian <laughs> faith, I believe. And I don't want to use any big words. But like he's talking about like an Indiana Jones step off the cliff faith. Right. Believe it or not, you can have faith in something that is you're sure of. You can have faith in something that's concrete and evidential. <laughs> it's a thing. Right. Like, I have faith in the atmosphere, but right. I can't see it. <laughs> that's <laughs> like, it, it, there's still proof that it exists. I, I, like, it was just a weird, like, it was, I, get, and I'm still not convinced, like, I don't want to steal any thunder here, but I, I'm still not convinced <laughs> that taking a picture of the pearl would ruin that. Would ruin, like, honestly, take a picture of the pearl, write the story, don't tell anybody but, where you found it. People are going to be like, oh, yeah, let's go. Here's the weird part about that is, is this is, I saw what they were going for, and it's yes. basically any movie, Christmas movie with Santa Claus in it, where they want to be like, hey, you should believe in Santa Claus without seeing Santa Claus. And so there, the idea is is you should have the faith without having to see it. But I 100% agree that it was the wrong line to say at the time, and it just kind of ruined any more momentum they had going Well, let me ask you a question. If we're all in that same spot, we found the pearl. Yeah. Taking a picture of it. Are we taking a picture of it, or are we actually taking the pearl and making some money off of that bad boy? Well, the pictures are the money. She's going to make a ton of money off of the pictures. I, I don't even really mind that they didn't do it. Like, I do think there's something cool about, like, you know, there's like this pearl out there. No Go one find knows. it no yourself. One know, no one yeah. knows if it's real or not. So I get that side of it. But the reasoning behind it, like the way in which they broke it down and articulated why they're not going to take a picture of it was my big way what. I just didn't quite yeah. understand their reasoning. Faith and proof it. are not mutually exclusive, and that's the end of our philosophy talk. Uh, Dan, okay. Panda? Uh, yeah, there's a couple things for okay. me. Uh, first of all, uh, Ben Watson, the dude who is... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> first of all, how creepy is that guy? Oh, creeper. Uh, just, just uber creepy. But the, second of all, they make a really big deal about this Ben Watson guy. Set him up as the rival, and then he has one scene that's like, <laughs> what? 30 seconds at most, a minute, and then he's gone. He doesn't show up again. They had to walk for an hour, Dan. <laughs> they didn't have time for Ben Watson. I just, they set up a guy who I think actually he was creepy and obnoxious enough to have him a recurring role in the film, and yeah. that would have been really fun. 
He's not there. I I'm almost gone. would have liked him to go on this oh, myself, on the trip. <laughs> So it's 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 been tagging along, and it's like who's gonna get a better shot? And I think there's something there. Like he actually ends up taking the picture of the pearl. He writes the story, but they uh, end up going with hers. So what you described is a better movie. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I'm trying to say. Um, Hallmark, we are available. <laughs> I, we will take what? We'll take we'll take the money. Yeah, we'll take run. the money and run. Go on. You got another one? Oh, yeah. No, I do. I, I do. Absolutely. Uh, my second thing that I have to mention is how they actually found the pearl. Oh, boy. No one can actually... I, I got to go back to the fact that they found a pearl. The pearl was found. But oh. second of all, you're telling me these guys who have lived on in Fiji their entire lives have never found this pearl. Well, no, the people that are guiding them have found it. They, they kind of allude to that. They're like, oh, I think they... Like, I feel I felt like well I don't know if the two the the dad and the the daughter had but the people that they talked to at that resort thing they definitely had found it yeah for sure okay for sure. yeah so even so we'll have to ask them how about we'll 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 this is one of my white what's but it like how they describe it they say decades of tears like Fiji's been around for thousands of years at least right yeah but they didn't start crying until decades so ago. just 30 40 years ago <laughs> it, like it, it, yeah the decades of the disco era that's what led us to the pearl like right. what is this that whole legend is something yeah it is so i've got a couple wait what's i've actually got three i'm gonna break the rule but i'll do them really quickly why do you Insist. I'm sorry. He's kind For, of. I'll, how about this? The first one will be a piggyback off of Dan's last one, and it is the pearl is buried warm. in basically a Jumanji game box. <laughs> <laughs> like every other rock is normal, and this has a face on it. Yeah, like, are we not? No, it's not a rock. It, we, but that's what a you, that's a that's a wooden box. It's a wooden. So someone took the pearl, yes. cleaned it off, put it nicely in a waterproof wooden box with a face on it and put it right in the water like a few inches under and nobody's been able to find it. Yes. That's the most absurd but thing. You wouldn't, but you wouldn't be looking for it. Some people have found it. That's I, the point. But I will say this. When I saw the box of the pearl, like I guffawed. <laughs> like I literally went, pah, <laughs> like out loud. Like like I thought it was going to be like a very, and then the pearl clearly came from Target. Like it's this, it looked it looked, like a, it looked like a marble. It looked like a marble. The pearl should shine so bright that, like, like, I know Hallmark's anti special effects, but just throw a lens flare. You on went there. to <laughs> Fiji for crying out loud! You can't spend eight bucks on a pearl. It I looked like it. a marble. I used to have a blue marble. Mm. You had the pearl, and it was a I real pearl. marble. So here's the other two. That's Pearl in Paradise Two. Is <laughs> real <Dan> marble. <laughs> That's right. Um, so at one point they're following this map, and they have to either they have to either go up like a bunch of waves, a bunch of feet, or they can cross this this water. And they cross the water, and there's a moment where Wagner's character, it, it appears she's lost her footing, and the music turns very, like, very <laughs> dramatic. Like, we're going to have uh, either a death, or Palaha's <laughs> character is going to save her, and it's going to be a romantic moment. But instead, neither happen, and they just laugh about it. <laughs> yeah. And it... I didn't understand. I, I, How can, deep is the water? Was it ever serious? Why did this happen? And then they just think it's funny. I understood it to be fairly dangerous. Like they were talking about how <laughs> the water was rushing. So I why are they scared. laughing? Can we say there were there were two scenes that uh, Chris was a part of that were dynamite? One, him falling down, <laughs> classic dynamite acting, and the second is that swimming scene where he oh my so goodness they lose this waterproof bag and, and he goes booking. Michael Phelps down, down the there. River, and mm. he gets it like this. And I'm like, homeboy. Homeboy did it, I guess. I love those. Him but falling off the cliff is classic. Any Gold. sort of, any sort of uh, thing in, in Hallmark movies that are like somewhat action, I'm always. Once again, of. though, because Palaha doesn't give it all away in his acting, because he saves some of it, he sets himself up for getting some laughs out of those pratfalls and stuff. Yeah. Where, whereas other. Like other leads usually don't do that. Yep, what do you think true. he's saving it up for? I don't know. Just one day. But he's got smolder to burn, that Chris Palaha. I've said that what? for years. Um, so my last one is is that the guys leading him on this particular tour, they continue to call Palaha by the character that he's written. Yeah, yeah. Like Does they call him like Gordon Bombay or yeah, something. Gordon Bombay. <laughs> no, that's the coach no, of the Mighty that was Ducks. It. No, that's, you're right. Okay. You're right. It and, is it is uh, Pearl in Paradise, the Gordon Bombay files. And at first I was like 
I, I know they live in Fiji, but they have the internet. Like, yeah. there's no way they're confused. I mean, I know I call John McClane diehard, but I think that's just a thing that everybody does. And I, and then I realized, no, 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 <laughs> this this guy that leads the tour, he never actually. You don't call John McClane diehard. No, I, okay, I got it. You remember when diehards in the hotel? That's a thing everybody does. Yeah, no. Um, this guy never says what he means. Like the whole movie long, <laughs> right. he he'll go no. I knew it all along or not. Nah, they're going to find the pearl or no, nah, I knew they're in love or, and so like when he's calling him Gordon Bombay early on, I'm thinking he doesn't know Pala's name. And then I realize he's just a liar. Like the whole movie, he never says what he means. That guy plays the long game better than <laughs> he is there. playing the, he's, he, yes. he met, he met Pala. He's a sage. <laughs> wait, wait, I know what I'm doing guys. <laughs> Wait for four days and then the yeah. big reveal, and it's going to be awesome. You see, oh I appreciate goodness. that. He's the wise sage. You need him. He's the wise sage. Are there dumb <laughs> sages out there? Hi, my name is the wise sage. Hi, I'm Gary. I'm the dumb sage. <laughs> they play. You, don't, short you don't trust Gary. <laughs> It's time for What the Hallmark is. Yeah, it's the time is. of the show where we get to say, man, I wish I got more clarity on this because I re- if not, I'm going to need it in part two. Mm. Um, the deuce. Thompson, let's start with you. Okay, so I know I made fun of his book series with Gordon Bombay yeah. or whoever, whomever that is, um, but he has these alliterative series you know, of books, Pearl in Paradise, and they all have the same. Right. Um, I but now know. they have the. Did you catch the end? Yes. Okay. Just want to make sure you. But it was the a end. different series, right? It was a different series, but the girl. It's a girl. Yeah. Yes. So I, that's exactly right. I want to know if he ever brings the male character back, and maybe they fall in love. Mm-hmm. Maybe mm-hmm. they bring it back. I mm-hmm. think there's a there's a lot there to have. What would be some good names for other jewels that he could find? Um, I Chris, did, Crystal in China. That's uh, terrible. Okay. <laughs> Uh, Ruby in Russia. Ruby in Russia. Um, Cold there. I always like when you come up with ideas. Like, what was it? I said diamonds to Dallas. What did he say? <laughs> he said something to Hawaii. Hats to Hawaii. Oh, what was it? <laughs> it was. It uh, was impossible. Like yeah, it couldn't yeah. happen. No, I've got one. Topaz in Taiwan. Ooh, Topaz, Topaz in Taiwan. When is if Palai? If you're listening, and we we really hope you are. We love you. Uh, if would you sign on for a Topaz in Taiwan, Pearl in Paradise two sequel? We got to find it. some I'll topaz. Write I'll write, write it. it. I'll write it. Here's what happens. Mm. I'll give it a good is review. Is Ben Watson in it? Because if Ben's not in it, I'm ben out. Ben Watson is absolutely in it, and then Ben Watson <laughs> is actually my what the hallmark. Um, as I mentioned in the synopsis, he is there for a scene, and he disappears. I'd like to know kind of how he felt when he found out that he was um, chosen over. By uh, Jill Wagner's character, chosen even, over. Yeah, just, listen, that's what happens. They, the boss, picked Jill <laughs> Wagner's character, even though she didn't send in a picture. Correct. And so, he, just an article. They he need went pictures. and he got this great picture. Had it done and with oodles of time to spare, as Ben like, Watson does. Nah, I'm out. So where did Ben? I, I, I imagine Ben took his talents to South Beach or something. Like he mm. he left and he's somewhere else. So I would like to know. Um, and I believe that movie would be called uh, Photograph: The Ben Watson Story. <laughs> <laughs> Panda. I, I before before I get to my what the hallmark. That's uh, what it's called. Yeah, what the hallmark. I, I remember, guys. I'm a little rusty. Yeah, a little rusty. So. I do have a question about the where Ben took a photo of the rock in yeah, the mountain. Like sure. it produces a rock every thirty years. Is that what it said? That can't be what it said. <laughs> if that's what it said, I, and I missed it, I'm ashamed of myself. It, I did. I did not. It, I, don't know. I was too busy looking at the carnival box in the water. <laughs> <laughs> uh, my what the hallmark actually would do? What? So I think for me. <laughs> Danielle, <laughs> yeah, the the staff. Class. Oh, of course. Yeah, no, she was on she, the tr- she she had a lot of charisma, charisma to burn. She right? did have charisma. You know who burn. she looked like? Who? Winnie Cooper. She did look like a Winnie, little Cooper. Little Winnie Cooper. I actually thought it was mm. Winnie Cooper for a so brief second. So we take second. her crown for Christmas three. Ooh, two crown well, for Christmas. Everybody two. all like so many people want a crown for Christmas too. Oh I'm assuming goodness. it's going to happen. We'll get there in a few weeks. Yeah, we will. I, I want to know what happened to her and was that her dad? I Is that what they? I think so. it was her oh, dad. Boy, there's like five years. I'd there. be okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'd be okay with a spinoff with those two. They were fun. They were fun. Maybe we could he see was more a wise Fiji. sage. <laughs> he was a wise sage. Mm. Panda, that was such a good what the whole. That way. was. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bring it to the Save the best for last. And I think that about that does about it. Does it, <laughs> guys? Man, 
We should do this more often, guys. How about Friday? How about Friday? What about Christmas train? Christmas train. Mm, Danny Glover. Danny Glover. Dermot McGurvert. Dermot McGurvert. <laughs> Dermot McGurvert. Dermot McGurvert's in it. Yeah, he is. Kellyanne Paisley. What's her name? Kimberly. Kelly. Kimberly. Kimberly. Whatever the case may the be, we're engine. gonna review it, and it's gonna be great. It is. I will say this. Um, I hate these movies, but I love you guys. Dude, we love you. I and love I think you. that's what matters. Dan. Oh, my God. Love all hey, of rate and review us. Speaking of sh- sharing the love, rate and review mm, us on iTunes. Yeah. Uh, follow us on the Instagram, the Twitter, the Facebook. And sh- just share us with your friends. Like, I know that you guys have friends that love the Hallmarks, but I also know you have friends who hate the Hallmarks. And I like to think that There's a little even, something even for everybody. those who would go like, oh, Hallmark, what, would also enjoy our podcast. I think so. I think there's enough in there for the whole family to enjoy, if I can mm. say it that way. We so bring sh- families together. I've said for years. That's it for us, boys. Merry Christmas, guys. Merry Christmas. Happy summer. And see you on Friday. <laughs>